Plug in Jules fans, welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV. It's Monday review time and it is the first one that we've done in a while uh, because of the self-imposed break in the run-up to Christmas, which I've already explained on previous videos, but it is good to be back. Uh, unfortunately, though, we'll not be joined by Reese of German Jules today. He has prior engagement, so you'll have to put up with just me. Um, but despite the result, it is going to be a positive one. Um, even though we lost to Brendan Rogers, Leicester City in the third round of the FA Cup. Plenty to talk about, plenty to be hopeful about, plenty to be positive about. Before we get into the game itself and the whys and wherefores and the ifs and the buts and all of that, it was brilliant just to see the Priestfield packed, wasn't it? We've not seen it nearly enough in recent seasons. Obviously, it's three years since West Ham at home pretty much to the day. Um, Leicester, I thought, were brilliant in the numbers that they bought. About 1,800, if I remember correctly. 8,500 packed into the little Priestfield Stadium. Um, atmosphere was great. 45 minutes before kickoff. It was one of them games where you had to be in early, I thought. Um, and I was. Um, then there was the welcome for our new owners. The Gallinsons, Brad, his wife Shannon and his kids as well. Who did a half lap of the stadium prior to kickoff. Um, I've not actually watched his interview yet back on BBC. But looking forward to watching that. All positive from what I've read on social media. Um, and it just gave everyone a lift, didn't it? It's been a real struggle in the league this season. And we'll have to get back to that now because there's no more distractions. But just a really good day out. And, and Gillingham Football Club and its people and its players and its staff and its fans. And its absolute best. Right, on to the game and the nitty gritty of that encounter itself. Obviously, team news came out at half past 11 because of the early kickoff. There were three changes from Neil Harris. Um, no Glenn Morris anymore. He's gone back to Crawley. His loan has expired. So it was Jack Turner back in goal. And then Shay Alexander and Hakiba Delacoon came in for Stuart O'Keefe and Mika Mandron. So it was a 5-4-1 for Jules set up. So teaming four was Jake Turner in goal. That back five was Alexander, McKenzie, Amar, Wright, Tatonda. The midfield four, Adela Kuhn, Jeffries, Williams, the captain, and McDonald and Scott Cashkit ploughing a lone furrow up top. Only six on the bench, unfortunately, for one reason or another. Um, Leicester were full of quality, weren't they? Jan Vestergaard, Sayunchu, Albrighton, Tielemans, Iosi Perez, Jamie Vardy, Kalecci and Acho, who we'll get onto later. They all started. So this was much changed, but a much vaunted Leicester City lineup. Let's make no bones about that. And we were really up against it, but I thought we put in a brilliant effort. First half started really openly, didn't it? There was chances for both sides inside the first 10 minutes or so. First, Jamie Vardy made one of them trademark runs, ball in between um, Will Wright and Max Emar. Jake Turner, I thought, done really well. They had to get out and smother the shot before Vardy had managed to get it off properly. Um, and then we went straight up the other end. I can't remember who it was in the middle of the park for them. Might have been Vestergaard. Um, took too long in possession. Dom Jeffries, energetic as always, pinched it, drove and drove and drove towards the edge of the box. Angled drive, which he caught really well. Daniel Leveson made a pretty routine stop looking back um, with his right hand. But it was good to see Jules trying to be on the front foot and trying to be positive and cause problems. Um, but yeah, I thought everything we did in that first 40 minutes, 45 minutes, we did really well. We kept Leicester at arm's length. Um, we competed superbly. Everyone was willing to put their head in the way. Everyone was willing to put their body in the way. Everyone was willing to put their foot in. Um, we kept in our shape. As soon as we lost the ball, back into a five and a four, two banks, making it really hard for them to play through us. You have to be solid when you've got someone like Yuri Tillemans in the middle of the park who can pick a pass, thread the eye of a needle. Um, he's opened up plenty of teams better than Gillingham over the years, both for Leicester City and internationally for his country, Belgium. Um, yeah, obviously we didn't have a lot of the ball. Um, that was understandable. We've not had a lot of the ball in the Brentford or the Wolves games either, the two sides that we've already played from the Premier League this, this season. But we were a threat, weren't we? Intermittently. We got into good areas. We ha harried, we harassed. We didn't let them have a moment's peace at the back. Um, there was another half chance, weren't there, at the end. Sean Williams, after a Maxima flick on header. Not sure whether it had actually gone in. Daniel Leaves had to grab it under his crossbar. Just before then, Ian Nacho just started to get in the game just before the interval. And I said on the match day live, Jules need the break that last couple of minutes. Whipped one outside to win with his left foot that went just past Jake Turner's post in front of the Rainer men. But I thought we were thoroughly deserving of the nil-nil scoreline when the referee blew that half-time whistle. Second period started pretty much in the same vein as the first. And, and, and as much as we were really solid, the, both periods started really openly, didn't they? I'm not sure Mark Albrighton was shooting. Mark Albrighton, sorry. Um, he's tried to cross it. Jake Turner does well to backpedal and, and flick it over the bar. And then we defend the corner really well, if I remember correctly. 
Then we went up the other end, though, didn't we? We responded really well again. And there was a great double chance. Robbie McKenzie done really well. Getting on from that outside centre-back position. Um, cuts it back for Dom Jeffries. He makes a decent connection. I think it's one of the centre-halves that gets a block in. Whether it had gone in, I'm not sure. But it was certainly full Stevenson into action. And then you never know if the ball bounces into the six-yard box. Um, but eventually it worked its way back out. I think via Dom Jeffries' header, who followed up his own shot. He, he nodded it back towards Hakeem Adelikun via a deflection off of, um, I think it might have been Brunt, the young centre-half. It's a decent strike and a good connection from Hacks, but just drifts wide again of that post in front of the Rainer men. That was that post that we're seeing the action almost. Um, yeah, you just think if, if we'd gone in front, we'd have been able to cling on to something and it could have been a really different outcome come 90th minute. But class told a few minutes later. Um, I think it's a foul. I said that on the match day live. The ball comes in. Looks like Robbie McKenzie's going to clear it. Jamie Vardy's being clever. Jamie Vardy's made a career out of being clever. And he, I, I think he gives uh, McKenzie a nudge in the back, which, which forces him to be off balance and he doesn't get a connection on the clearance. It, it drifts out towards the far post. Turner goes to try and narrow the angle and it gets cut back. Jamie Vardy's not quite set, doesn't manage to control it, but master marksman Ian Acho's there to bury a side-footed effort controlled into the top corner. Um, I've looked back at the highlights, the brief highlights. I've not watched the full game back. To, there's not much complaint from our players, though, so maybe I was looking for something that wasn't there, but I'm still going to say I think there's an infringement. Um, would Leicester have been appealing for a foul if a shoe was on the other foot? Um, but it's a good goal. It's a good finish from a very good player, um, and they've got lots of them. Um even those that don't start every week in the Premier League. Um, after that, there was plenty of changes for both sides. We brought on um, Stuart O'Keefe. Unfortunately, Dom Jeffries had to go off with a knee problem. Fingers crossed, that's nothing too serious. Um, who else did we bring on? Callum Harriet came on for, for Shay Alexander. And then Mika Mandron was the last roll of the dice for the other wing-back, David Tatonda. So we really were ultra-attacking in terms of two attack-minded players at wing-back. Uh, we had Mandron, we had Kashki on the pitch. Still had McDonald, um, Adela Kuhn. So there was, there was lots of, you know attack-minded players. We just never found that, that guilt edge chance. And, and that's a problem that's that's run through our season, isn't it? But I'm not going to sit here and criticise anyone for the performance yesterday because we were first class against a first class opposition. Um, Jake Turner had to make a couple of saves as well. There was a really good one from, from Ian Acho who came alive. Um, and then a really good one from Jamie Vardy. I think David Tatonda slightly under hit a, a backward header. Um, Turner got a massive left hand on it to keep it out and he was very, very good on the day. Um, the only other, option, um, the only other um, chance, I think, for us was Adela Kuhn to drive straight down the throat of Everson. But we competed. We worked hard. We got in their faces and we made sure that, that they knew that they'd been in a game. And I said that on the match preview show, that I knew we'd do that. Um, there's just been something about the cup games this season. Um, but it wasn't to be. Leicester probably deservedly go through just about into the fourth round. And we wish them well for the rest of the campaign. Next section is where we look at the best opposition player on the day throughout the 90 minutes and what an opportunity. I can't pass this up. Fantastic, Mr. Fox. I'll get my coat. Um, <laughs> Kelechi Iheanacho. I know it's boring and a little bit predictable sometimes when you pick a goal scorer to be man of the match. But I just thought that pretty much everything the Fox has done really well went through Kelechi Iheanacho. He had that effort at the end of the first half. And if that had bent inside the post, we'd have been in for a very different second bit. We'd have to chase the game. Takes his goal really well. It's a really smart finish. Would have been a, could have been a tendency to lash at it with his laces, but he knows that Turner's out of the goal. So if he can pick a pick a, 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 a part of the goal where it's not manned, which is what he does with his side foot, then he puts his side one nil up. Turns out to be the winner. Um, forced another save, didn't he, from Turner shortly after scoring. And looking at his stats, 90 minutes played. Four shots in total, two on target. Um, obviously scored the goal. 84% pass completion. Two key passes to create chances. Won all of his aerial duels. He's missed the FA Cup. I saw a twi um, tweet on social media that said, um, since his debut in the competition in 2016, no one has scored more goals than Ian Acho 16. So he's mad for this competition. He was very good on the day. And ultimately, he made the difference. In terms of the Jill's man of the match, there was probably three candidates for me that really stood out. And then everyone else put in a real shift. So there was no one that had a bad game. There was people that influenced the game less because of the fact that attack-minded players had to do a lot of defensive work. We didn't see a lot of the ball. But in terms of effort and application, desire to play for that, no one can be faulted at all. Um, Sean Williams, one of his best games in a dual shirt, I thought. Um, 
protected that back three really, really well, used it fairly well when he got it. Um, Dom Jeffries was superb until he had to go off with an injury. All action, box to box, centre midfielder, almost a little bit of a throwback, which is what we need. We desperately need legs in the middle of the park. Um, but for me, it was someone playing in a role that he doesn't do a lot, and that was Robbie McKenzie at centre back. I thought it was absolutely first class the entire game. Um, seemed to be in the right place all the time to block things, to make a tackle, to put his foot in, to clear. Um, it was an outlet from set plays, wasn't he, when we were taking goal kicks or, or Turner was kicking out of his hands. Notice what he did clever was he'd swap with Alexander and Alexander would tuck in. Mackenzie would be the one that we could hit, win that flick on down the line and get us up the pitch. Um, yeah, just a really, really solid performance for 90 minutes from Robbie McKenzie. And for me, that was that was the reason I gave him man of the match for the duels. Played 90 minutes, 55% pass completion, which doesn't sound brilliant, but he's a centre-half and it was higher than the average for the team. 72% of his aerial duels he won. And he's, he's playing against, you know, maybe not world-class, but very, very good footballers in that front three of Iosi Perez, Jamie Vardy and Kelechi and Acho. And he stood up to absolutely everything. Um just cleared, headed everything um, and provided one key pass as well, going the other way. So that was the ball for Dom Jeffries, wasn't it? Which could have created a very different game if Jeffries had managed to tuck one in the bottom corner, but it wasn't to be. But for me, Jill's man of the match, Robbie McKenzie. To finish up, it's the Jill's player ratings overall. Um, like I said, there was no one that was poor by any means. The, the slightly lower ratings for me are just the fact that Players couldn't influence the game in a way that, that we want them to do. So that's attackers being attacking, created players being creating, defenders defending, that type of thing. Um, but it was it was a performance that embodied what Gillingham Football Club should be. Um, so for me, Jake Turner, solid seven, made really good saves. The only thing that let him down was his kicking, kept kicking it in a touch a few times. Which, but that's something you can work on. He's only young in terms of a keeper. Um, but yeah, really good and stood up to everything when he had to. Um, Shay Alexander, I thought was really good, um, solid. Tried to get up and down the line when he could. Again, was pinned back for a lot of the game, but solid seven was only sacrificed because of us trying to be more attacking rather than anything to do with performance. Robbie McKenzie, seven and a half. I've already spoken about him. Max Emar in the middle of that back three. Solid seven. Again, same as McKenzie, same as Will Wright we're getting on to. He's up against top, top players and he stood up to everything. So seven for him. This is the anomaly for me. It would have been interesting if Reese was on. A few people have said I've been harsh on Will Wright. I gave him six and a half. A lot of people said he should be seven, seven and a half, some eights. I just thought that he took too many chances at times against players that are very good. Um, and then there was one particular instance in the second half where he's trying to be clever and duck out the way and let the ball go out front. He's hit him on the shoulder and put us under pressure. But again, it wasn't a poor performance, but I just thought out of the three centre-backs, he was the one that was, was slightly less impressive. Um, but we all see it differently, don't we? So that's that's the beauty of, of the game that we love. David Totonda, a solid seven again, same as Charlie Alexander. Didn't get a lot of opportunity to get forward, but when he did, he got a couple of good balls into the box. Solid seven. Um, middle four, Hakiba Delacoon, a couple of shots, one wide, one straight at the keeper. Enigmatic, I think, is the way us Jules fans describe him. He's got plenty in the locker. We've just not seen it enough. Six and a half. Middle two, Joe Jeffries and Sean Williams, both seven and a half. Thought absolutely first class in protecting the defensive players. Um, Alex McDonald, the same as Hakiba Delacoon. Worked hard. Runs through brick walls for you. Just didn't have enough influence on the game from an attacking sense. So six and a half for me. And the same for Scott Cashkit. Chased down lost calls. He's put pressure on centre-halves all the time. I want to have a look back at the highlights. There was one the second half where he, he, he looked frustrated himself because he thought he was offside and he put the ball in the net and we were sat sort of 10 rows behind the dugout in the Medway stand and there was a TV screen for BBC and it looked like he might have been level but I've not watched it back yet so I'm going to have to look at that and that would be even more frustrating if he was on. So six and a half for him. In terms of the substitutes, we didn't rate Callum Harriet or Mika Mandron because they only got 10 minutes um, including injury time. Mika Mandron, though, word on him, he's been absolutely you know, barracked by our fan base and rightly so on some occasions this season. But four out of four aerial jewels, he won the lot. If he'd got longer, maybe we'd have, you know, caused more problems. But ifs and buts and all that. Um, the only one we did give a rating to was Stuart O'Keefe. Nothing spectacular. Didn't do anything wrong. Did really well on one occasion to, to push um, Jamie Vardy uh, wide when they broke. We gave him a six. So that is it. Um, that's the Jules match rating from our FA Cup tie. Um, yeah, just a very, very solid team performance against a good side. That is it um, as Monday Review returns. I hope you've enjoyed it. 
it's great to talk about a positive performance in defeat because we've not had enough of them this season. But that is the distractions out the way now. We have a massive week in the transfer window. We probably need a couple in before Hartlepool. Lots of names doing the rounds on social media. I don't know. Um, Jaden Stockley's being linked. Omar Bogle's been linked. I think there's a lad from South End or two of them being linked. Um, goalkeeper, apparently that's a new name that's come up. Craig McGillivray from, from Charlton would be a really good signing. Um, but obviously, people are aware there's been an influx of cash into the football club. Prices go up. Inflation occurs. We do need a couple in before Hartlepool. That's a massive, massive game because other teams played league games at the weekend. And I think we're now five or six points from safety with games in hand, albeit. But there is signs of hope in the form of Brad Gallinson. There are signs of hope in terms of the performance yesterday. We can get a couple in this week and have a good week on the training pitch before Hartlepool. We can go into that game with a lot more confidence. Enjoy your week. I hope your Monday's not too stressful. Uh, we'll see you later in the week for a preview of Hartlepool. And then, of course, we'll be back for the Match Day Live. But until then, up the jewels.